Hello, this is Mike Wilmot with Microsoft. I am a technical specialist with Microsoft covering database and business intelligence. I want to cover today some geospatial reporting with Microsoft reporting services that I've put together. I've also put David Golub on here. He's a platform architect with Microsoft, and he has actually done a ton of work on this topic. If you go to his YouTube site here, um, that's the 10 Minute College site, then you will find a lot of his uh, great work here. And he's actually been kind enough to share with me the collateral he had to create that site. So thanks, Dave, for that. And my goal is to actually um, replicate the, the work that he's done and, um, and, and kind of solve the same problem and publish this to uh, Channel 9. So um, if I click on his site here, you'll find that he's got lots of, of great work and um, specifically on the 311 problem of uh, the San Francisco data that we're, that we're going to look at today. Um, he's done a lot of work on that. There's part one, part two, and part three of that of this work. And uh, so he was kind enough to lend me all his assets and virtual machines and um, I was able to, to piece it together, but he did uh, an amazing amount of, of work uh, ahead of time. So I'd really recommend you check out this site on YouTube. There's a lot of great content here. So the, the problem that we want to solve today is this 311 incident management problem for San Francisco. We want to do that um, by looking at the capabilities of the Microsoft Geospatial Platform and figure out a strategy to solve the, the business problem that we're looking at. And again, this is... Uh, this is a replica of, of Dave's work, and, uh, and so let's go ahead and get started, and you can reach out to either of us for, if you have questions. The, the problem that we're trying to solve is that the city manager of San Francisco wants a reporting system that can track um, city services incidents. These are 311 incidents. They're not 411 in the sense they're not emergency, but they are important to be solved. She wants to find um, all the 311 incidents within a 200-meter buffer of a given road segment and that would include adjacent streets. <clears throat> An example of that would be, what are all the 311 incidents in their, in their age um, around the road segment one of Geary Boulevard? And then, so just to, just to um, remind you, 311 incidents are things like re repairs needed, graffiti, um, cleanup that needs to be done, abandoned vehicles, eyesores, things like that in the city that need, need cleaned up. So the city is presentable and is attractive to folks that visit it. The things or, or the abilities that are built into Microsoft Geospatial are a great database engine to store the, the data, the lat long geospatial information, um, key performance indicators, metrics, things like that. You want on top of that a reporting layer with a designer like reporting services that's got data management abilities that's able to create data sets and data sources with parameters. You also want to have a, a mapping layer, like a Bing Maps, that you can plot uh, mapping data on a visual surface. You also want to have spatial data types, like geography and geometry. Um, and those would have methods that you can do things like uh, create a, a point from a well-known text field. You can also do things like um, have uh, spatial temporal methods that's what the ST means um, so you can show it as text you can you can get buffers around certain points and you can find intersections so this first one here you're getting the geometric point um, from a well-known text this one you're converting that back to a text method um, well-known text and then this is getting a buffer and intersection around a given point if you look at a well-known text what that is it's a it's kind of a standard in the geospatial community and it's how do you represent things like points and line strings and polygons. In the case that we're looking at today, we're going to be really focused on line strings and polygons here. These line strings will represent streets, and the polygons can represent buffers around those streets. And we'll, we'll look at that. But this isn't just a Microsoft SQL Server notion. It's, it crosses multiple platforms. It even gets into multi-part geospatial um, items. Now, if you look at some of these methods from SQL Server, this one right here is a static method, and static methods are different than instance methods in the sense that they don't necessarily need an object type to be associated with them, like a, a database column. So in this case, what we're doing is we're declaring a geography type, 
we take a well-known text format here, a, a longitude first and then a latitude, and then we select that, that result answer. And what you get this giant binary string here that represents this well-known text. So we're, a lot of times you'll be given data in a longitude latitude format, but what you really want to do is get it into this well-known text, which is kind of the lingua franca that allows you to communicate from column to column in these, with these geospatial methods. Now, it, there's another method here as text. So if we want to go from this really long binary string we just created from a text point, our uh, well-known text, we can go back into the longitude and latitude and, and everything's um, back to where it started. You also might want to call a buffer or intersection method. This is really going to be key to solving the problem that we have, where we have incident points provided to us by the city. And then we've also got road line strings provided to us by a national shapefile database. And what we'll be doing is we'll be finding the intersection between this road line string. We'll create a 200-meter buffer around that line string and find out all the intersection uh, points that intersect the um, a buffer around the incident point. So create a buffer around the road. That buffer intersects the incident point, and voila, we're at, we end up with kind of the data set that intersects the customer data, which is the report data, and then the national database of, of line strings that, um, that is represented by the shapefile. So to go back to the problem, just to restate it, the city manager wants a reporting system that can track 311 incidents, and she wants to be able to find all those incidents within a 200-meter buffer of a road segment. The challenge with this is that it, it may not just be Geary Boulevard. It may be, if you take a 200-meter buffer on Geary Boulevard, that will definitely include side streets and alleyways and things like that that aren't necessarily on Geary Boulevard. So... You'd, you would be really hard pressed to be able to solve this if you were just given lat long and even if you had the shape file uh, from the national database as well as the incident points and lat longs the the national database is um, has geometric types and lat long is not geometric by nature so you'd have to try to figure out a way to use lat long and really sophisticated t-sql that ultimately you you would end up creating a geospatial data type anyway to figure out how to how to generate buffers and do intersections. Um, so ultimately that's why this this data type has, has been these data types have been created to support geography and um, geometry data types. Now because it's it's not really possible to solve this type of a problem, at least in a in a straightforward, simple manner with traditional data types, what we want to do is kind of solve this problem in a stepwise way where we get their lat long incident data and now we have to convert that to a ge geography type by calling this spatial temporal method point from text. So we're going to ge generate this ge ge uh, ge geographic data type. Then with the shape file we'll have these polylines that are sourced from this this website here. These polylines are from this national transportation database and I'll just scroll down here. You've got a bunch of items here, polylines, polygons. If you click on the one that's the National Highway Planning Network, this 49 megabyte one, what you can do is take this, this, um, this shape file and convert it into a SQL Server database. There's also other methods that we had mentioned, this like point from text, um, this as text, this buffer method, and this intersect method. All these are on the TechNet website if you want to look at these further, but they, they kind of show what we already talked about in terms of some are static, meaning that they can, they can be called without a, an object, and others are instance methods. So you'll see on the side here whether, um, you know, how to call these methods, the parameters they take, and examples of those. So let's come back here and once we've got these polylines, we're going to convert those polylines to a, a shape file that's a format that, that SQL Server can, can, can understand once you run through a third-party tool. So if you do a, a Bing search for a shape file to SQL Server Converter, you'll find that when you pass this SRIDF 4326 into that shape file, it'll convert it to an output that can be consumed by a SQL Server database as a table. There's also FIPS codes that are 
county and state codes within that data. We'll look at those in a little bit. The FIPS codes just allow you to slice and dice the National Transportation Database data and extract the relevant county and state that we're looking at. In our case, it's San Francisco that we care about and we look in, in the state of California. And then lastly, what we want to do is Bing Maps um, allows us to leverage SSRS, geospatial types, and parameters in conjunction with geospatial methods like the buffer and intersect methods on the road segments and incident points to determine which street have the 301 incidents in their, in their age. So um, this is really the, the last step is the most important where we're combining Bing Maps, reporting services, these geospatial methods, and these road segments that we've got from, um, from the national database. So um, really it's, it's, a, it's a combining of the customer data as well as these, this, this national um, road database to kind of um, produce the results that we're looking for. The tools at our disposal include things like geospatial intelligence. What you see here is a SQL Server query that, that calls this ST point from text method where we're creating a well-known text format with a longitude and latitude. And by, by calling this point from text, it's generating these spatial results that you can see that all these incident points were data points that were, um, that were formed by uh, SQL Server to show all the incidents that happened in, in San Francisco. And again, we have this library of, of um, instance and, and static methods that we can call to, um, to find out all sorts of interesting things about our, our data to, to produce the information that we want. We also have these spatially aware reporting tools that allow us to do the Bing maps, to, to draw polygons around incident points, and to show us things like status of, of age of, of the incidents. And, and um, you can also do things like page to the data, you can print it, you can download it to PDFs, you can subscribe to the data through your reporting services, all that kind of stuff. So lots of power on these tools. And again, you do want to leverage these shape files from the National Transportation Atlas database. Once you download these, run through the third party tool, then it forces that uh, data to reside in SQL Server if that's what you want. And then you've got a, a large database of data that you can, um, that you can leverage and, and run against. So the goal here is to really combine both of these data sets. Over here, we've got all the incident points from the customer that we've converted to this common language by, by calling this um, ST point from text method on, on the well-known text format. And with this SRID of again, 4326. Now on the left side here, what we've got is this national roadway, roadway uh, database that if you see all these different uh, poly lines that we've drawn, these represent all the roadways, the major roadways in San Francisco like Geary Boulevard or Van Ness uh, Boulevard. And so what we're doing is by drawing a buffer around these and then correlating that to these data points of the same, roughly the same area, we're going to be able to do an intersection of <clears throat> the buffer around these, these line strings, around all the, the road database that we have, this you know, massive kind of Uber database of all the roads, and then this report over here that has all the incident points from the customer. So the incident points intersect uh, somewhere inside these these buffers here, and then we're given the result set that's that's going to um, allow us to do kind of visualization on top of these of these maps. If you want to look for further information, you can go through here and look at the polyline database from this um, Rita database that we talked this national database. You can also call these spatial temporal methods that we've got on um, on your SQL Server data to convert back and forth between kind of the well-known text format and the binary format. And like we said, if you have an Esri shape file, then you can convert that to a, a SQL Server format easily through some of these uh, free converter tools. Um, that, wraps up, that wraps up the, the kind of slideware portion that, we, um, that I mentioned. I also do want to go back as a reference to, to Dave uh, Golub's 10-minute um, college that probably should check this out first and foremost and run through those three videos to get a sense of how he solved this problem and, and the nuances um, therein. So hopefully this, this helps you get a sense of the initial problem that we're going to solve. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into the actual um, practicum of, of this part of, of the lab and of, of this presentation and get a sense of how to solve this practically. So we'll transition over now. So now I've converted over to the database view of, of, of things. Um, I've got this San Francisco database that, that Dave had in his virtual machine. And within that, we've got this National Highway Planning Network table. We've got our initial data from the customer, the, the staging table. And then we've got a report table that we generated from the stage table. So we'll just look through a little bit of the data on the, on the stage table. If we run this, we'll see that there's lots of incident points. Uh, it talks about kind of the 311 incidents, the nature of the request, the, the location, the district, all those types of things. At the end of this data set, you'll see a lat and a, a latitude and longitude. This is, this is a helpful first step, but it doesn't really give us the geospatial data type that we need to call these geo, geospatial methods on it. So what we'll do is we'll, we're going to run um, this insert statement that basically takes the, the key fields from the, the customer staging table, and it selects star from that, as well as it, the, it creates this geography type from this well-known uh, text method and the, and the well-known text format here. When this is run, um, which is already has been, so I won't run that now, what you get is you get a, all the same data in the stage table, but then you get this really crazy looking binary string on the right here that represents the longitude and the latitude, but it's in this bi binary format. So you can kind of switch between the well-known text format, which is a combination of the longitude and latitude, and then the incident point is this kind of, again, lingua franca, that it's, it's a way of communicating between multiple systems and multiple tables that allows those tables to do all the uh, sophisticated math between um, geographic types. That, was the, the, that represents the report table and the stage table. If you go to the National Highway Planning Network data, this is where Dave was able to look at these FIPS codes <clears throat> and um, actually, before I go into this, the second table that we're, that we're going to leverage, I, I do want to show you that there are spatial, anytime that you run a spatial query with spatial data, you're going to have all sorts of um, data points that come out of that table that represent uh, spatial results. And so it's almost impossible to see here, but you have this little dot here, and this little dot represents um, lots and lots of different data points from the customer data. So what we'd want to do if we were kind of interested in what we were seeing in this data is we'd want to be able to enlarge this data and get a sense of, <clears throat> of what we were seeing here. So I'll, I'll kind of center this data point here. It looks like, a, like almost a little gnat on the screen. As we, as we make this bigger and bigger, what we're going to see is that we'll have all these customer data points. And this represents a, a very large section of, of California and, and perhaps beyond. And if you're familiar with San Francisco, you'll, you'll start to see it kind of starts to, to manifest here with all these different data points. So this is a, a great first step in terms of being able to visualize that, yes, in fact, we do have a spatial result. And that spatial result is because of this incident point, this ge geospatial data type. Now, if we look at all of, our, all of our roadways now, we have this National Highway Planning Network. If I execute this, this also is going to have a um, geospatial component to it. And that's what this road line string is. Be anytime that you have this uh, geospatial component, you're going to have a spatial result that's going to execute on that you can, you can see um, all these different roadways. And so what I've done here is I've, I've selected the geospatial results, but there's so many here that it can't display them. So what I'm going to do is just select the ones from San Francisco County with this FIPS code of, of San Fran County and the state of California. So let's go ahead and execute that. And we'll look at the spatial results. Let's go back here and run the select statement. Let's just go with the San Fran County and the state of California. Look at these spatial results. In this case, we're going to, again, end up with a geospatial result that looks a lot like the streets of San Francisco. <clears throat> Sounds like a TV program almost. Um, so this is going to be great because now we have these line strings. Once we create buffers around these line strings of the streets that we care about, those buffers are then going to intersect with, with our customer data. So 
we're really onto something in terms of having these geospatial data types here that we can that we can show. Um, so let's keep going down to the next section here. What we're going to start doing is um, we're going to look at this our our San Fran roads geog table, which is going to be from this National Highway Planning uh, table that we had up here. <clears throat> And this was this is basically a, a view that we created on top of it just to pull the the fields um, that we care about that relate to San Francisco. Now what we can do is drill down into Van Ness Avenue, and we're going to call these two spatial temporal methods as text for this well-known text format and this um, buffer that we're going to basically change to um, 300 meters in our case that's going to show the same line strings, but they're going to have these, these giant buffers around them that can ultimately encapsulate all the incident points from the customer. So let's go ahead and run this for Van Ness Avenue. You'll see that it just pulls in the, the, the road section in question. There's mile po begin and end mile posts that we care about that ultimately are represented by these different road segments. And what this is showing us is that it's, it's again, the inter interplay between the binary format here in the well-known text format here. And you can see that there's more than just one lat-long pair. There's multiple lat-long pairs. And that, what, that's, uh, what that's showing us is that there's this uh, well-known text format that's, that's producing a buffer. If you go to these spatial results, you'll see that it actually produces this nice buffer size that's 300 meters wide in, on, on Van Ness Avenue for this, for this street in San Francisco. So this is going to be great because it's going to start encapsulating all the incident points from the customer. If we run it again with a smaller buffer size, we're going to see that that shrinks a bit. So that's pretty cool, I think, in terms of being able to show these, these different buffers. Um, if you just want to look at the fact that you can create these, these road segments, we'll just do a quick, quick look at that. We're going to use these a little bit later in, in some of our parameters for our report. And let's go ahead and look at, again, these, these road segments here. You've got the road name, the mile post, and the road segment sequence. Um, so just kind of a, this is a quick creation of that view, which we're going to re represent here, we're going to use in our report. What I'm going to show you now is something that, that uh, Dave did in terms of being able to look at all your, all your data here that's ultimately going to be the main query for your report. If you run this, um, what you'll see is that we've, we're looking at Van Ness Avenue, we're looking at road segment sequence one, and we're looking for specific types of incidents with a, with a specific type of a buffer. Now, this is great, and again, we have our, our incident point and our road buffer that we're going to be leveraging. Ultimately, in, in reporting services, we'll be showing the different points around the city, the incident points, and then we'll be showing this buffer around those incident points um, that ultimately can can encapsulate those incident points and we can we can call those out and, and actually draw a line around those incident points. We ultimately want to be able to parameterize things like the road name, the road name, the the segment, and the buffer size we want and the types of incidents that we care about. So what you'll see next that Dave did is um is create these query parameters. And once the roadway is, is selected, then we can kind of cascade down and get the road segment and from the road segment and the roadway. Um, we also have something like buffer size and we, we, can, we can leverage things like our incident types within the context of, of all, these, um, all these parameters. So there'll be kind of a cascading parameter because once you have roadway, you can, you can determine the road segments. And once you have roadway and road segments, you can determine the incident uh, types that are are relevant to those um, to that city with with the buff with the buffer size given, as well as the the roadway and road segment. So all those are going to come into play here soon, and we're going to use these different um, these different queries here to produce data for our for the drop down boxes for things like the roadway, for things like the road segment, and things like the incident types. And those are going to those are going to be um, incumbent upon things like the parameters that we sent, like road segment and roadway. So this just shows you that the incident type is going to be dependent upon things like roadway and road segment. And um, hopefully that makes sense. And things like 
um, the actual road segment is going to be dependent on the roadway parameter. So there's kind of a, a cascading nesting of parameters that we're going to be leveraging. So let's go ahead and let's let's go ahead and start creating a reporting services report based on this this query here that we've got with the query parameters that we that we have. I'm going to go over into um, my uh, SharePoint site. And what we're going to do is look at creating a report builder document. This is going to fire up report builder. And once we have report builder fired up, then we can start creating a geospatial report. We're going to have to do things like create a data source. We'll have to create multiple data sets that represent the, the main data set as well as the, the parameters that we care about. And then we'll add things like Bing maps and, and go from there. So let's do a new report and we're going to create a, a blank report report for starters um, first of and foremost we need to create a, a data source so let's call this the sf311 data source and um, what we're going to do is create a, a connection type to sql server so let's go ahead and build that out I'm going to test that out. Great, it's working well. So we hit OK. Server name selected, it's all good. On credentials, this is an important step. I'm going to use the Windows credentials of my end user here. So now we've got a data source that goes back to our SF311. Let's go ahead and, and create a data set. Now this data set is going to be something that we're going to leverage from the, the 311 database. Let's go ahead and drop it in here. And again, you'll see that it's got parameters like roadway, road segment, buffer size, the, the incident type. All these things are, are going to come to play in our report. We also might want to do something just to test our report out by inserting a table here. And I'll just create a quick table on the page. Let's just look at, and this really doesn't matter that much initially, but we'll just drop in things like the subject, the duration and hours, and say the neighborhood. Again, this is just, we're just using this to kind of start testing out our report. And ultimately we want to get to kind of a, a geospatial kind of a mapping layer. But what you can see here is our parameters are, are kind of dumb parameters in the sense that there's, there's no defaults, there's no, they're not data driven at this point. So it wouldn't really be helpful at this point to view the report until we start doing some interesting design on it. What we want to do is when I, when I dropped in this data set that you just saw, it has all these fields, but it also had parameters that we had buffer size of the road, like 200 meters. The roadway, like um, like Van Ness, if we want the road segment, like one two three four, and the incident types, like graffiti and and um, say there's abandoned vehicles, things like that. So we need to have data for all these things to make them more intelligent. So what we'll do is we're going to go back into our our data here, our, our query, and let's go ahead and find out uh, what the road names are. So again, we have this road name query that we're going to put in here. Let's create a data set for road name. That's going to give us all of our road names. Now we're going to go grab our road segments. Now again, road segment is based on roadway, which we just put in there. So there's going to be kind of nested or cascading parameters that we've got coming here. And we've got road segment. Lastly, we need incident type. So this can be the type of incident that, that occurs. Graffiti, things like that. Come back in. And again, this is kind of the most dependent of all. It depends on roadway. Depends on the buffer size that you're creating um, around the, the road itself. And the road segment um, 
as well. So th there's a lot of things that this depends on, and that's going to be kind of a uh, it's going to be roll up as you as you create the or as you select the parameters. It's going to affect the the incident type here. So let's go ahead and actually for incident type. That's one thing that we want to have as a multi-select parameter. So it's something that I need to remember when I when I create those parameters. But for buffer size, we know that's going to be something like a an integer. We're not going to get it from a query. We're going to specify. We can either specify a value, and um, let's just go with a default value of say 200, 200 meters. Okay. We also want to make that an integer and. We don't want multiple values or nulls, so that's good there. On roadway, what we want to do here is, for available values, get that values from a query. <clears throat> We're going to get leverage road name, and the label and value field are going to be the same. For road segment, let's go with available values, specify a value, and I'll get, get it from a query. So this is going to be... <clears throat> value field here is the sequence and the label field here is the mile post. No default value. That's my bad. And then the SF311 uh, on types, we want to come into variable values, specify values. That should give us a nice head start in terms of being able to get the parameters that we want. I'm also going to make this allow multiple values, and you can type in a different prompt if you want, like um, something like that. So this will allow you to kind of um, create the interface that you want. So now we've got a 200 meter buffer. As we select roadway, like say Geary Boulevard, that automatically is going to give us the, the road segments that are available. That's also going to drive the incident types here. So there's kind of a, a, a cascading effect of these parameters. Now it's going back to the database, querying the incident types available for that roadway, um, for the buffer size, for the road segment. And now we see the, the different types of 3 one incidents available. If I view the report here, we're just going to get back a, a grid of data that represents these types. And ultimately, really, what we really want is to have a geospatial representation. So let's go back in here and let's get rid of this grid because we, we really want a, a map. And we're going to make, well, let's get rid of this execution time. We don't care about that right now. We're going to go ahead and make this a bit bigger. And what we want to do now is, is insert a, a map into this. So let's go ahead to the map wizard. And what we're going to use, there's, you can do a, a gallery, you can use a shape file. We've already got a shape file in terms of our, our spatial data here. We want to use a spatial query, and that spatial query is this first data set that we had. So we'll just grab this data set, and what we'll have is incident points. Those incident points are actually the point, uh, a layer type of point. We want to use a, a Bing map layer, so let's go with a hybrid layer. So... We'll run through this. We want a bubble map. Hit next on that. And there's also an analytical data set option. If you had a if you had a, a separate analytical data set, you would want to join that to your previous data set. But in our case, they're all the analytical data set and the geospatial data set are all the same. So let's just go ahead and click data set one, which is our data set. We'll use the ocean theme. And for our data fill, we want to look at the duration in hours. And we'll do it with a green, yellow, red type format showing, you know, incidents that are new versus incidents that are, that are aged in, in that regard. So once this is done, we should, we should have a lot of the tools that we need to have this geospatial report. If we run it, let's just see what, what happens here. We've got our buffer, go with Geary Boulevard. We're going to go with our road segment. 
we'll pick all the incident types and then we'll click the view report this is then going to give us a result set that we can plot out on a map and this is, this is kind of nice you can see all the incidents that uh, um, that we plotted out on our, on our map here um, so you can see gear, you can see our, our buffer size. We're going to shrink that down to say maybe a hundred. We can go ahead and do that. We'll view the report and it's asking us for incident type because we have a whole new set of incident types here. Click on that, say view report. And again, it's going to go with a bit smaller segment here. So let's see how that turns out. So yeah, so it's a, a bit smaller. So now what we're going to do is go back and um, we're going to design this map. What we want to do is we want to look at just drawing a buffer around the incidents that happened on, say, Geary Boulevard. So what we want to do is click on this map and we want to add a, a mapping layer. It's actually going to be a polygon layer. And that polygon layer, we're going to come in and kind of start start affecting the, the layer data here. So what we want to do is link to a spatial field in a data set and we're going to go back to data set one and the spatial field name is going this at this point is going to be the buffer, the road buffer. So what we're doing is overlaying a buffer on top of these incident points. We'll hit OK to that. And what we'll also do is kind of go to the polygon rules of this of this po of this buffer and actually the template and let's go ahead and make the background color no color we'll change the border color to something interesting like uh, just aqua and we'll change the f the size of it to maybe a, a three so now when we run this, what we're going to see is it's going to draw a, a buffer around. Let's go with Van S here at this point. Let's try a different one. We'll go with uh, the last, the longest road segment, and we'll pick um, certain incident types that we find relevant. I guess it would be all in this case. View report. So what you see is it's it's highlighting. Venice and it's it's drawing a, a buffer on that again if we want to try it for something like Geary Boulevard we could do the same thing we'll click Geary it's going to generate a different set of, of segments for us as well as it's going to generate a, a completely set of, of incident types for us as well so let's go ahead and just select the graffiti ones this time and maybe the sewer storm floods let's go ahead and view that And we get the same same type of experience where it's it's selecting the road segment in, in question with the the buffer around that, and it's highlighting um, the data with <clears throat> with kind of a status of, of of red, yellow, and green. Now, if we wanted to do a little bit of embellishment on here, we could kind of spice it up a little bit by adding a report title if we wanted. So we'll go ahead and click this. This is just what we're doing here is leveraging all different parameters that are in our data. So we're going to look at the, the 311 types that are within the parameters of the buffer size and the roadway value. What that's going to give us is a, a nice title that's going to allow us to get more information. Um, and when we go ahead and run this, Actually, that should have said expression. So let me let me double check that. Uh, I think I put it in the wrong place here. Okay, there we go. So I put that in the wrong place. I want to actually get rid of this piece here. Um, what you see up up top here is that it, that it knows that that's an expression at this point. And when we run this expression, it's going to show us that expression in terms of the the data that that expression returns. Let's go ahead and run this. And then we'll see now is that it, it creates a nice title for us that it's that's data driven. And one thing that would be nice if we could hover over these points and get some some information about that. 
And I'll also take this title and I'll shrink it down the size a little bit because it's a little obnoxious. Let's do that. Let's center it maybe. And let's go back one more time into our data. Let's grab a tooltip here. This tooltip is gonna is gonna be relevant to the point layer here. And the point layer, we're gonna come in, look at the point template, and we have this tooltip. This tooltip is going to be something that we can again take this type of a, a tooltip that's that's an expression or it's it's driven data driven essentially and it's going to allow us to get information about those points that we can just hover over and display so let's go with Geary again it's road segment we'll go with graffiti incident types and again sewer, sewer storm floods now when we hover over these these different points, what we're, we're going to see is that it's going to give us some metadata about it. And we should be uh, looking at graffiti, mostly graffiti type incidents here, which we are. So um, hopefully this explains some of the process that you would go through to create interesting reports that have geospatial intelligence built into them, as well as being able to visually see things like buffers around street segments the incident points that you have, as well as how to overlay the um, geospatial types that represent the different different streets that allow you to, to highlight a segment of that street, to find the intersection data, intersecting data points, and to drop that all into a Bing map that, that has all that knowledge baked into it and, and can display that information, as well as parameters and expressions that you can leverage in reporting services. Uh, um, you can also take this report and you can also publish it to SharePoint as an aside. So hopefully this has uh, been helpful. And um, again, this is Mike Wilmot and working in conjunction with David Golub. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you want to have more information on this. Appreciate you listening and hopefully this helps you create great geospatial reports with Microsoft SQL Server and reporting services. Take care.